każda destylarnia ma swój magazyn, ale tylko niektóre destylarnie i niektóre magazyny mają wyjątkowe miejsce, które nazywa się paradis. Paradis po francusku oznacza raj. I to taki wydzielony obszar magazynu, w którym znajdują się nie beczki, a szklane butle, czyli dam żans, w których to leżakują, wciąż oddychając w zawartych butlach powietrzem, destylaty tak stare, że nie mogłyby już być one składowane w beczkach. Do paraditra bardzo trudno się dostać, ale mi to się dzisiaj udało dzięki uprzejmości, a także dzięki lekkiemu ponegocjowaniu z Arnaud i Denis Lesgorg, których to rodzina już od trzech pokoleń posiada Chateau de Lobat i zajmuje się promowaniem i budowaniem i produkcją tego właśnie wspaniałego Armaniaku. Ok, gentlemen, first of all, thank you very much for letting in, me in into this very intimate and very precious place. I really appreciate it. The atmosphere here speaks for itself, really nice. Uh, and uh, using the occasion, opportunity that, that we are here, I'd like to ask you a question that um, I would really like to know the answer. I'm sure there's a lot of people in Poland also who would like to know. What is the reason of keeping the eau de vis in Damjans, in the glass bottles? Because, of course, the uh, eau de vis are very old, so we keep them here. But are there some other reasons to keep them? And how do you do it? How do you manage it? Is it not dangerous to keep it all in one place? How does it happen? Please tell me. No, it's not dangerous. It's, it's paradis here. Yeah. Mm -hmm. the, the paradise where we store only the very old brandies, eau de vis. As you saw before, the ammoniac ages in cask. Mm -hmm. But after 50 years, it's enough aging. The mm -hmm. ammoniac have kept all the flavor from the oak mm -hmm. and all the tannins and all mm -hmm. the good uh, flavoring of the oak. But after 50 years, we consider it's enough. Mm -hmm. So by putting in those glass jar, there is no more uh, aroma uh, mm -hmm. evolution, only it's stale still. So it's mm -hmm. good because there is no evaporation. Mm -hmm. We don't lose armagnac. You don't lose armagnac. Uh -huh. It's important because when the armagnac is very old, uh -huh. it has a lot of uh, cost. Okay, so does it mean that uh, there is no more tannin, so the, the oak doesn't affect the armagnac so much? And does it mean that here it stopped, it no longer ages, that nothing happens? Or is there something that happens here? Not totally, not totally, okay. because you see it's uh, yeah, yeah, it's still oh, it's still, so it's, it's not, not so fully okay. closed. It's not oh, fully indeed, closed, yes. but okay. it's uh, the evolution is very, very, very low, very slight, mm -hmm. and uh, and uh, and like that also we can maintain the percentage of coal, mm -hmm. of alcohol. Maybe in ten or fifteen mm -hmm. years it will decrease the, just a little bit. Mm -hmm. So you you give a lot of air to give oxygen to ox to oxidate the spirit. In but no loss of alcohol, not loss of alcohol, or exactly there is always some oxygen. Mm -hmm. But the purpose also using glass mm -hmm. jar is that they are smaller than the cask. Mm -hmm. So because they are very rare and we don't have a lot of liters mm -hmm. left, mm -hmm. let's say for for example 1920 mm -hmm. or 1904, mm -hmm. yeah, we Thomas, have yeah. a few liters. So uh -huh. we do need a smaller glass. Okay. Thomas, here we are we are speaking about armagnacs, very rare, but uh -huh. really rare. We, we mm -hmm. We still have a couple of liters, and uh, and we decide with Denis every year how much we're going to sell to mm -hmm. our customers. We so it's not like some. it's on sale. No, no, of no. course not. Of course. I not. have to ask you a tourist question. Sorry, I know it's a stupid question, but what's the oldest thing in here? The oldest, the vintage? oldest vintage in Italy. So the oldest vintage right now is 1893. 1893. Yes. Yes. Okay. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. And, uh, but as you can imagine, it's only a few liters. Uh -huh. and, uh, and I already saw, because I had a sneak peek, that it's not like I can know which one it is, because uh, you keep it all coded. So, for instance, this is B23, and it's not like it says 1951 or something. Why do you code it? You know, because we don't... Uh, we, this is totally secret. Uh, mm -hmm. the, the code gives you a vintage year, mm -hmm. and Dennis, myself, our father, and our cellar master mm -hmm. knows what B23 so, is. So it's all coded. Because we and don't only want, in case somebody yeah. enter here, yeah, uh -huh. we don't want him and to know. And only four that. people in the world know which vintage is which. Yeah. Yeah. Yes. Okay, that sounds good. And also, one last question: Do you keep them all here? Because you know, if you know history of spirits, you know that in distilleries all around the world, be it France, Scotland, US, whatever, there are some fires sometimes. You know, alcohol is quite easy to burn. So do you all keep it here or do you distribute the risk? Do you run the risk in some different ways? Or? Absolutely, we yes. distribute the risk. The same that we do for the cask, 
mm -hmm. that age in seven different cellars. Mm -hmm. Same apply with the very, very rare uh, mm -hmm. and old Armagnac. Mm -hmm. Most of the very old are here, but we still have other that are kept in Damjan in other places of the cellars. Okay, you know, the so, so the risk is distributed, yeah. well, maybe not evenly, but in yes. different places so that you don't lose. Absolutely. Okay. The same vintage uh -huh. is not in the same cellar. Yes, okay, so we this is We share it in different cellars okay. in case one uh, will be on fire. Okay.